Welcome to the J3 University Podcast. I'm your host, John Jewett. And I'm your co-host, Luke Miller. Our mission is to elevate the physique coaching standard. And deliver the highest level of competitors to the stage. Let's jump into today's episode. Getting huge as possible on Thanksgiving. I know you're going to tune in to all these different podcasts. You're going to see it all over social media. How to not get fat on Thanksgiving. How to be conservative and stay slender and thin. (laughs) And we're in the off season. So we're going to give you a different episode on Luke and I, how we would optimize Thanksgiving day to just get as swole as possible. Yeah, and I think uh, I think the the first conversation is what session falls on Thanksgiving, and I think back to like my early days of bodybuilding, and what were the how would I celebrate, you know, any holiday or birthday or Christmas, and it, it has to be legs. I just don't know of a more fun session to completely obliterate yourself, and utilize all of the macronutrients and micronutrients that are going to be coming with this Thanksgiving meal, which I think we should dive into of like, how are we going to optimize this micronutrient and macronutrient profile across the Thanksgiving dinner table? And, but I think it has to start with leg day, right? Uh, I've almost always trained legs on Thanksgiving (laughs) day. Talk about a coma, right? Like you (laughs) you do legs, then you eat, thanksgiving and it's just immediate like that's just set up for for sleep mode the rest of the day maybe it's not the best to train legs on that day <laughs> oh but I, goodness but i get i get landing like your your most like highest energy output day on the highest caloric intake day which mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense doesn't have to be i know some people that are going to have like um body parts that are just lagging behind they're like man i better have this huge anabolic meal on the, on the day where it's shoulders and arms or, or whatever it may be, Wh- whichever that day falls for you, perfectly fine. But for, for Luke and I, we've usually always have hit legs coincidentally on Thanksgiving. So I think that planning for me is already the day before. So that's where it needs to start for you to optimize this day. You got to have a somewhat of a plan. I know we're just trying to wing and enjoy the family time for Thanksgiving, but you know, you're a bodybuilder. You're already planning (laughs) out the day. It's happening. I don't even need to tell you not to do it because you're going to do it. So if we have this leg session and I think we will start in the morning, what, what normal things might happen, but for this leg session and really thinking like get as huge as possible, I'm going to go to a two a day session. And Mm -hmm. normally I have it in the past, but with uh, with with this fun hypothetical in place, that's how I would split up the session. So this is just the initial framework of what I'm going to have. I'm going to split quads and hams. Love it. Morning a a a m p m. But normal routine in place. Thanksgiving morning. Wake up. Cardio in the off season. It just happens. But it's not cardio to make up for the calories I'm about to eat because we're Mm. getting huge here. We're not trying to (laughs) offset anything. It's just what we do, right? That's just the standard. So cardio steps, your, your normal ab vacuuming routine that's in place. That's all going to go, going to happen. Now, how, how would you Luke, when, when do you usually train or, or, or I should ask, when is your normal Thanksgiving meal? Like, do you have a set one with your family that y'all would always do? Is it, I know some people do PM or, it's not set every year. It's typically like that 12, 1 o'clock-ish time. So I'm like in the gym 9.30-ish, 10, because if we're doing legs, it's an hour and a half session minimum, if not two, right? And so like I'm trying to get back and get, you know, not like drenched from leg day walking to the Thanksgiving table. So I'm giving myself like that 30-minute time window to get ready. So 9, 30, 10, I'm getting pre-workout meal as soon as I wake up and getting hydrated. And those are the first two things, like getting hydrated before legs so that I'm not creaky because, you know, in the past, I don't know if I'll be able to do it this year. It's like the big PR hack squat or pendulum squat set going into the Thanksgiving has to happen because it's the only way that you can actually enjoy Thanksgiving is if you hit PRs with the logbook. And 
So like the hydration factor is the biggest one. And so making sure that fluids go in immediately upon wake, you know, doing the activity to me, in my opinion, helps you with the hydration, like especially with like getting steps in and getting fluids in across those steps and then pre-workout meal and going. And that's like first thing, priority of the day, especially with the juggling the family time situation. Like the thing about family time is things get deprioritized when things don't go well. So doing it first thing, make sure that it gets done and, and, and headed into priming the body for the macronutrient overload it's about to receive at lunch. Now, would, after that session, so that, that would land you pretty close to Thanksgiving meal. And, and that's like, that's how my family times as well. Like you were usually like midday, kind of early afternoon. But there can be a big gap because you know how things go. Like, oh man, the, tur- <laughs> the turkey's running late or the the stuffing or whatever it may be. So uh, I, I, ha- I have to have something like post just yeah, to make sure true. I can last, you know. So I usually will do, so I'm like you, I'll have my meal one, my normal meal one. Then I'll have something that's just light that will keep me from going like hypo. <laughs> so usually <laughs> usually like, yeah, a protein, protein shake. Um maybe some fruit, maybe some type of like uh, carb-based powder, that will be enough. Or um, depending on where we're at, I could even do like like a whey cottage cheese mix with some fruit like mixed in and like granola or something, something relatively light where I'm able to eat again in the next like hour and a half for, for Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Do you normally have like some something post or do you just like – Yeah, so something small. I try to, and the only reason I'll typically go like way with oats with that is oats for like the carbohydrate relative to volume aspect is I can not put a lot of caloric intake into that post-workout meal and like get enough to hold me through and the fiber can kind of bring me along. So something like 40, 50 grams oats with whey, just kind of get like a little protein bowl going. And then go into Thanksgiving an hour and a half later. Um, that way, it's just kind of like, like you said, trying to keep from going hypo and sitting in the the lazy boy in the corner of the living room while you're waiting for it, just sweat, just like rocking back and forth, like trying to stay alive. Um, but yeah, that's typically the direction I would go. Now we're gonna split our session up, and mm. so that's something to discuss on your your A session, the first session. Um, yeah, whether it's quads first or quads later in the day. Um, now, it would be my preference to hit the most most f- potential for fatigue, like the most taxing session first, because mm-hmm. otherwise, if you do have a morning session later in the day, session might be impacted a little bit more. And there is a kind of a wild card in place of the Thanksgiving meal. How's that meal going to digest to go like <laughs> squat, squat after that? <laughs> so I think with those things being considered, I would put my quad work first in the day. Yep. Absolutely. Would, you, would you agree? I would. The only thing that's going to be different is, you know how we typically train legs. It's always like hamstring curl into squat pattern of some sort, right? Before we get into our major compounds. And so I'm sitting here thinking like, how am I prepping for that? Because I like the hamstring curl to kind of get moving and and get blood flowing before I go into any compound work. And I'm thinking that I would do adductor work first. Okay. I think I would go adductor two sets into externally stabilized squat pattern so that I, just for me personally, adductor work lowers my ability to stabilize the pelvis. And so like I get worried about knees. Um, and then you're gotta have some sort of leg press in there. And that's what I'm hitting and, and just putting it all on the table. Three movements, get in, get out. Yeah. With, with my session now <laughs> actually set up quite perfect for Thanksgiving of splitting this. Cause I actually have not been doing a leg curl first. Oh really? And with just idea around prioritization of what I want. Like I want just crazy quad sweep, just bellowing over everywhere. Right. Uh, and so I, I've been doing leg extension first and that started when I had a quad injury. 
because I'm like, all right, I'm going to pre-fatigue like out my quads and then really make it to where I have to use really light loads once I get to like the squat pattern. So for me, there's like a, there's been a safety profile around it, but I feel pretty primed, man, like doing a leg extension first. And you look at a lot of old guys that lift, they all like, yeah, I got to do leg extensions and warm up the knees first. So I guess I'm just that old guy that is training quads now, but it's been a crazy productive, um, that type of setup for me. And I don't, I, and for me, like my hamstrings are a stronger point, right? So I don't necessarily need to train them first in the day. So anyway, my session leg extension first, like I'd have it set up. Then I would hit my squat pattern, which is rotating between a pendulum or a Roger squat. Then I'll do a unilateral leg press or a split squat, depending on where that session falls. So three movements, just like you mm. have my three movements. Those are beasts of movements. Like I, Renee and I posted that session up on a uh, IG and it looks just so, so pathetic on paper, but man, if you do it, it's like, we'll bury you. <laughs> like we're dead. after yeah. it. So, but that, yeah, that would, I think that would be the, the three movements I would do. Yeah. The only thing I would, I would say, since we are splitting the sessions up, if you have another body part that you really, really want to prioritize and you're training legs, right? You could yeah. do your butt. You could do your bicep work before quads. I think that would be perfectly acceptable for that short of a session. And that, that is going to bring me into another thing for the, the, the PM session. But we'll, when we get there of, of some like additional body parts, you might, might add on. So, mm. so that's fun. Luke and I hit quads. We're now ready for the Thanksgiving meal. We have our posts already planned. Thanksgiving meal. It's there. Here's the layout. Where do we even begin? Do you have a, do you have a, I, I know I've asked you cause I was trying to think about it last night. What was Luke's favorite Thanksgiving food? I know you mentioned to me last year. It had to be, I think it was some type of casserole thing. Am I wrong about that? I like, I like the stuffing. That's my, that's like up there with like it, but I'm picky about it. Like this whole box stuffing thing is not, not where it's at. Like that's just not growing up in the South in Alabama, like real legitimate, like stuffing where it's, it's. It should clog your arteries. Like, that's how, how it should feel <laughs> eating it. Like, if it's not that, I'm not about it. Um, I It's either that or I'm a big fan of, like, a blueberry cobbler. But those are my two, right? Apple cobbler, blueberry cobbler, whatever that may be. Whatever cobbler is on the table, that that's in there. But that's, that's not priority number one. We have to go proteins, right? Like, that's the first thing on the plate. And don't waste your time with the ham. Like, there's there's no place for that on the plate. You go straight to the white meat turkey, and you do a double serving. And that is always step number one on the Thanksgiving plate. Because you got to get it before everybody else gets it. <laughs> yeah, I have such a small family. Like, that's never never been the, the issue. Um, I, I will say we've had years with some ham. And my mom would make this... It's it's gonna sound weird to people, but it was like a raisin gravy. It was kind of sweet with like brown sugar, and on the ham, it was like, I, I just, it was like candy. <laughs> and so, it was tempting. However, I agree with you. It's about the the white meat turkey, double servings for sure, and I'm a stuffing person too. Like that's one of my favorite things. Uh, one of my like probably the least favorite things are some of like the the green bean casseroles. I don't know, oh, that just was not no, bro, no. My that thing at all. That and the cranberry sauce? No, on the cranberry sauce. Just negative ghost rider. There's no room for that on my plate. All right, well you haven't had my nanny's cranberry <laughs> sauce. It's like it's it's homemade, it has like pecans chopped in it. Some celery, which I know celery, you're like, don't know. But it, it, yeah. <laughs> it is good. It's not canned cranberry sauce. So for me, that goes on the plate because I use that on my turkey. So okay. it, it's right. like, a, yeah, kind of, you know, meats with, with the fruit. It sounds weird to people, but that's a common thing. But um, So I do have that. Um, if there is another vegetable around, I would like to do it, but man, my last Thanksgiving, I brought my own veggies. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> it's such a jaw thing to do. Um, I love my veggies, man. So I had my own like like a stir fry medley that I had warmed up and, and left out of my plate. Cause I, I don't want a vegetable like covered in fat. So I was like, that's what I have all my stuffing and things for. So I, I yeah, I just want, once, want, want some veggies that are uh, not smothered in something. Yeah. My family's pretty good about Brussels sprouts. Like they'll make a Brussels sprout that's friendly, like not covered in olive oil and butter and all that crap. So we'll typically do like a garlic Brussels sprout with just like in the oven or something. That's, that's where it's at. That's the vegetable with the, that that's going on the plate for me. Now is your family a sweet potato family or a white potato mashed potato type style? It's, it's both, both are going on the, we're, we're a starch family. (laughs) That's, that's both going on the, typically the sweet potato is in the form of sweet potato casserole. So like, with the the maple brown sugar crust on it and the sweet potato and then you have like the plain jane regular mashed potato and that's that's where i'm going all day sweet potato makes me feel like a bloated whale so i'm going mashed potato and and you have to have the mrs schubert's rolls that's accompanying the mashed potatoes because you have to make at least one sandwich that's turkey mashed potatoes with the mrs schubert's roll otherwise you've missed out on optimizing the protein synthesis of thanksgiving but that's that's the staple. I don't know if you know what Miss Schubert's rolls are, but they come in this little tin, tin okay. thing. It's like all connected rolls. You put them in the oven. You literally just take it out of the package. You put it in the oven, and it's the glor- most glorious yeast roll that you ever had in your life. Yeah, I definitely don't skip like bread. I love breads, so I don't <laughs> skip on, on the breads or rolls or anything we've had. They've brought croissants before. I'm not huge mm-hmm. in croissants. I don't like the flaky. I, I I get that they're like layered in butter and they should be delicious, but that's not for me. Um, I like more the traditional like bread rolls or even if, if we like, sometimes we'll have like cornbread, which I'm all about cornbread. Yeah, um, me too. I know we have cornbread dressing. Yeah. <laughs> but I also want slices of cornbread too. Why not? And then I'll put some nanny's cranberry dressing on that. So uh, with... <laughs> But we, I'll say, look, like we've had both, like we've had sweet potatoes and uh, just mashed potatoes, white potatoes before. But I am mm-hmm. not into the sweet potato either. I burnt myself out in college eating cold yeah, sweet potato, and usually they're like they're so over the top sweet that I just can't even tolerate them. So I would go, I would go mashed potatoes. Yeah, mashed potatoes. You got to have the gravy. Gravy is like stabilizing out the blood sugar levels from the carbohydrate intake, and we're going to put said gravy and mashed potatoes on that Mr. Schubert's roll with some turkey. I like it. That's how it works. Yeah. Now, are you going to have dessert too? Are you waiting? No, no, I'm having dessert. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So this is where it gets a little tricky for my family because this has changed over the years. So marrying Emily obviously brings a whole new sector of the family into the Thanksgiving dynamic. And her mom makes this banana pudding that's called crack pudding. So, like, you know, while my blueberry cobbler or my apple cobbler has been the Thanksgiving favorite, there's not a dessert on this planet that beats this crack pudding. So, like, she made a tub of it one time in, like, a kiddie pool for a church event, and the whole kiddie pool is gone. That's how good this stuff is. So if that is on the Thanksgiving table, there is no other dessert on the table in my eyes, and I'm going directly for the banana pudding. Man, I, I'm a sucker for like like softer dessert type stuff like that with like mm. a slight crispy crust. That's why I love um, like coffee cake is a huge one for me. Yeah, that's or a good even one. A, yeah, a, like a cobbler, peach cobbler, blueberry cobbler. Oh no, no, um, losing me with the peach. <laughs> so yeah, oh. now I, w- I would pick blueberry <laughs> over peach, but if it's there, fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Bread bread pudding, I would be. I'd be about that. We haven't had it. I think Renee was actually bringing up maybe making one uh, when we go see my family in Florida. Or <coughs> she might do like a cheesecake um, with uh, this the Hawaiian. They do like a lilikoi sauce. It's like from passion fruit. It's delicious okay. stuff. So, But I'm not huge on like pumpkin pie or even pecan pie. No. Uh, like if you've seen my preps, I eat pumpkin like every single day. And I like it but I just don't care about having it in pie form. I'd rather have one of the other 
vegetable fruit combination of pies or desserts uh, like blueberry cobbler or pie. So, yeah, last year we made a grave mistake on the dessert table. We bought an apple pie that we thought would feed five, six people. Found out that it feeds like 15 people. <laughs> and so we had this like massive apple pie sitting on the, ta- on the table. And it was literally like an eighth gone by the end time the entire family ate. <laughs> and so we just had this massive apple pie just like waiting around the kitchen for like weeks. Yeah, I, I, I would, with this sessions in mind, I would just want a slice of each thing, mm-hmm. a small slice of each one, like a sampler platter, and then I can nail it down for what I want to hit again later in the day and go all yeah. in on. So that's that would be my, like, strategic planning around my, my post-workout PM session. So mm-hmm. I've nailed down the foods that I know I'm going to really go back in on. So does that complete yeah. the meal? Are we? Yeah, no, I think, I think if banana pudding's on the table, you got to go for it for the potassium to <laughs> prevent the cramping in the, in the second session. If you haven't had micronutrients, you have to go for the fruit-based dessert for the blueberry cobbler or whatever so that you have that micronutrient profile. Because if you're skipping out on like the green bean casserole and you're skipping out on the sweet potatoes and you're skipping out, you've literally got like turkey, mashed potato, and bread. Like the macro, the micronutrient profile here is very lacking. So you got to go, and you don't bring your own vegetables. So you got to go get some micronutrients so, so that you're not like wasting away your health. Because while we joke about clogging arteries, let's not actually joke. You know. I'm so glad we've balanced out our health with <laughs> blueberry pie. <laughs> And that satisfied that requirement. Yeah. It d- it definitely be sodium loaded out the ass, <laughs> which will be great for PM session, uh, you know, number two for the day. So uh, I would need that meal to sit and digest for a second. Honestly, I do like to walk like a little bit after Thanksgiving. Same. Just to, just for digestion, just so I don't feel like absolute terrible. Uh, pretty pretty incredible. It's like ten minute walks after meals can do wonders. So, I would take my walk. Probably I I can train pretty quick after a meal, but usually would probably for something like that kind of meal at least wait ninety minutes before I plan to move into that next session. Yep. And then what's on the table? What the is on the session? table? So, uh, depending if you want to add something else in, you you could do your bicep work on the front end here. Uh, you could even do some extra side delt work that's if you if you wanted to. So that's what I had in mind. Like I'm going to hit biceps before quads, then I'm going to hit a bit of delt work before hamstrings. And so with, then with hamstrings moving into them would be a, a lying leg curl, then into an RDL. Um, depending, it would really depend on what I did in the morning session. Um, if I had like no lower back loading, then I would do like an RDL. Uh, if there was some, like I hit a squat, RDL would be very much out of the picture. <laughs> I would only do uh, a lying leg curl and then a seated leg curl. Then I would have my uh, abduction, adduction work in that session. And I would hit calves and, and abs. And that would, that would be the session. So just to review that, side delt work, lying leg curl, seated leg curl, um, adduction, abduction, calves and abs. So sounds like a lot more exercises, but again, like some of these I would be doing some alternating sets with. So a lot of times I'll do with calf work. So I'll do a set of calves, then I'll move over to a set of abs just for, for time efficiency. But that's what that session would look like um i would really like that first movement of the day to be the one that is going to if for one it's going to be the one that gives you this tremendous pump like you're sodium loaded you're hydrated you're carved up everything's in place for an ultimate session so that's why i i would want to train like one of my weakest areas first so throw in a bit of side delt work yeah and we just had this episode about the x frame so i just don't see how you don't do side delt work as a part of that first session so you can't have too much side delt. Um, I think I would potentially challenge myself to do some 
vacuum work post Thanksgiving meal just to see. Yeah. Just in the, in the most challenging position, see what I'm capable of before we head into, cause you're not doing any bracing in that second session. You've already done that in the first session. So we're, I just, I think, I think like, what did I struggle with the most? And, you know, while midsection for me was never a big issue, like actually pulling a full vacuum was something that was a big priority in that last off season I was doing. So I would, I would definitely challenge myself to do that. So some ab work is going in on the, on that session as well with some vacuum work. Now, would you just have a lying leg curl, seated leg curl? And yeah, then? I'd probably go lying leg curl, seated leg curl, and then a remedial hinge of some sort. So like, uh, whether that be like a 45 degree back extension or B stance RDL or something like that. Uh, something that's not an actual bilateral hinge, but that's still going to load extended glute, uh, length and glute position. Yeah. I just, I left it out of my session just cause I, I potentially I might have a, my squat in the AM session. So like ticked mm. off that box. So, um, for I guess me, I'm thinking that's, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I know you, for your session, you, you talked about being kind of braced the, the entire time, right. With a, mm -hmm. a pendulum and then like a leg press, I think. So mm -hmm. that's the only, that's why I did bring up. Like if you had any lower back loading in your AM session, you might not want to do it in your PM session <laughs> or yeah. do something really like dial back, like a, like a 45 degree hyper or something like that. Um, I, I yeah. would also tack on, well, you said abs, I had abs, but also, you know, calves and I would put my adduction work in this session for me. So that was kind yeah. of the, the layout, but, um, it should yeah. be some tremendous pumps in this session. And I, I don't think it'll be like overall, like I don't want huge cardiovascular taxing movements. Cause, uh, if you've ever eaten like trained after Thanksgiving with a lot of sodium in you, you're going to get worked pretty hard. So uh, you might be limited in that capacity. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. I think then, then what that brings us to is our leftovers a part of the, yeah. The mac macronutrient profile of the day, put him back in post-workout. So my, my setup would be, okay, what did I really enjoy off of the first meal? And then just going straight to those foods and not even touching the other ones. So again, yeah, same hitting the protein hard it's going to go back to turkey i can't not have stuffing and bread again and also i probably i'm not huge on mashed potatoes so i would leave out potatoes these would be my go-to but i i am a i've turned into a real sweets person like i would rather eat less of the salty savory foods just to kill more dessert so i think it's appropriate post-workout like i want I want a high sugar carbohydrate load. It's, that's what's going to happen. So now I can pick out my main desserts that I really liked and have bigger servings of those. And that's how I would wrap up that post-workout meal. That's yeah. my, that's my planning. See, I, I'm going to do, I did the exact opposite. I would have the dessert prior <laughs> so that you're like driving that like ATP reuptake for the second session which is where the dessert goes in the first Thanksgiving, and the leftovers is strictly turkey, mashed potatoes, a Mrs. Schubert's roll, and then some stuffing, and I'm good. Uh, you know what? May, am I bringing my like protein ninja creamy to the gym and having protein ice cream and blueberry pie <laughs> at the gym? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so legit, though. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I'm gonna have a protein shake and a piece of pie. That's uh, <laughs> uh, that's where it's at. But and I think that optimizes hypertrophy within Thanksgiving, does it? Yeah, there there still would probably be one more meal left for the day, but I mm. usually would go back to my normal like PM meal by that time. So, which might just be by that point, uh, protein, protein. And, and, and veggies, maybe some fats are in there, uh, or some something pretty light too which might go back to doing just like yogurt and whey fruit, just some like nut butter of some kind. Um, mm -hmm. uh, some people might bring up the, the PED aspect around Thanksgiving. 
Yeah, like insulin metformin is that having a role in here? <laughs> Guys, don't um, don't shit yourself taking metformin <laughs> because that's not you know it's it's not its main mechanism, but it does have some action around GLP one which a lot of people get gastric distress around GLP-1. It will decrease carbohydrate absorption, which I'm trying to get huge on Thanksgiving, which I want my carbs going into my body, not out. So, and also throwing in that much carb with extra metformin could be problematic. So I would just take my normal dosing that I normally would do. I do think it would be acceptable to have a basal insulin mm -hmm. in place. So doing some Lantus in the morning, um, also not out of the question to put some like fast acting around your like largest meals. Take that for what it's worth and use wisely. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I, I definitely want to probably that would be pretty sufficient for, I think like glucose partitioning aspect. I mean, all the other things that we already use in the off season are going to be in place. Right. Yeah. So, um, some some might do like, oh yeah, let me do a an, an anadrol before like my AM and PM session and enhance like glucose uptake and pump. But I think that would be uh, not needed either. <laughs> so <laughs> your um, blood pressure is high enough. You're good. I, I, I think most <laughs> most of the conversations around like glucose disposal and you know trying to partition food more so. Which I, yeah. I think more of the problem could be around just you're going to run into some gastric distress trying to take like, you know, berberine or these other agents to do so. And really, guys, it's a supplement. So you can't work around just having an excessive amount of carbohydrate and, and just calories in general. Like there's there's no supplement that, uh, that's going to magically change that. And uh, these these GDPs, most of them that you're looking at, the formulations – have ingredients that are working through the same mechanisms just laid on top of each other. So it's, uh, uh, you know, Luke and I both, we, we don't recommend like the GDP usage. Um, I think if you're already in a body fat managed position in the off season, you're going to be partitioning calories in a very efficient way. So the, the supplement, it's just not needed. So the, the PD aspect, sorry guys, it wasn't too exciting, but I think, you know, having your basal metformin in place, some fast and slow insulins would be completely uh, reasonable mm. for the day. Yeah. Yep. I would agree. And I would say the last piece that we didn't bring up is what's also important to, after you give all this great stimulus is to be able to recover and have the adaptations come to fruition. And part of what's <laughs> needed within that is rest and relaxation. So some point of the day, depending on where your Thanksgiving falls, make sure you get a good 30-minute nap in and, and relax and enjoy the family time. So that's part of your recovery aspect around Thanksgiving. And also try to time it to where you're not eating so late to where it affects your sleep. So what quality sleep after all this, this massive training day that we're going to be doing. But I think that will wrap up our anabolic Thanksgiving. Don't worry about we're not Luke and I won't tell you to to limit the calories this Thanksgiving because we want to grow huge. <laughs>